Hello, everyone. I am Masahiro Okochi, head doctor and director of Okochi Internal Medicine Clinic. As director and office manager, we hold a leadership position over the treatment quality and hospitality of our patients, but also the care and concern of our staff. And if you have ever held a leadership position, then perhaps you have encountered problems like these. An organization staffed by employees who are passive or have negative attitude, being unable to nurture the growth of your promising staff members, growing gap in understanding between leaders and staff, amongst others. Currently, our clinic receives observation visitations from approximately 300 medical professionals from over 100 companies, including president and executives from various business fields. Not only do we help the medical service industry with hospitality, we call some businesses on how to include staff and customers into a family, a family that works positively for each other. Many of those company presidents and directors have expressed distress over problems I just share with you, despite their long-standing effort to create a future for everyone around them. When they visit, they ask us the same question. How can staff here work so energetically? Why is so everyone so full of life and beaming with optimism? How can all the staff members be so in sync about the priorities of their work? Why are they so motivated to do things outside of work that provide no material reward? In the end, I've always answered their many questions in the same way. It's because I've always expressed a huge compassion or in Japanese, daikando to my staff. Treating my staff like my family and touches their heart greatly and at times brings them to tears from pride in their work. When staff are treated like this, they become self-motivated and as a result, they also value their patient and take good care of them. There is a chain reaction of the compassion starting. The greater the compassion, the stronger the reaction the more active and motivated people become for others. Let me give you an example of a chain of great compassion. I performed my song. I secretly practice and memorize the staff member's favorite song and sing it to them as a surprise. Each person has a memorable song that exemplifies the my song in their life. How would you feel if your company president, director, or manager took the time to memorize a song that is important to you? You may think that a song is just a song, but ask yourself if you can sing a song of a younger generation. Unlike the song of the past, today's songs are very difficult to sing with lap verses and tempo changes. Let me sing a little here for you. Ima to nareba, hato yu madata ne, toki wa nagare, tsui ni o wakare, onna hi ga kuru to, mai kara wakatte wa ita keredo. Wow, it's so hard, right? Would you be impressed if your clinic director could sing such a young person song with determination and tremendous effort? As we age, simple things that used to impress us slip by unnoticed. When others make that most effort on our behalf, especially when there seemingly isn't any material reward to themselves, people's hearts can be deeply touched and moved by these actions. As the saying goes, actions speak louder than words, or as I prefer to say, actions of compassion create more action of compassion, a chain reaction. Staff members who have experienced receiving such acts of compassion often cry with joy and never forget it for the rest of their lives. In turn, they want to take action of their own initiative to do the same for others and share that compassion with their patient. I'd like to share a story about how a chain of great compassion in a clinic can become like a baton, a life-saving baton in a day race for life. Let me tell you about a story using manga, which has a long history in Japan. One day, during a corona epidemic, a man in his 60s came to our clinic with his wife complaining of a fever and sore throat. Step by step, you are almost there. Come on, just a little farther. The first person to see him was our office manager. Her husband was being supported 
by his wife and words of encouragement could be heard from her as they approached. The office manager noticed how pale the man's face was, and she called us over the intercom. We have the patient here who needs to be seen as soon as possible. I examined him as he entered the examining room. I could see that his face was indeed quite pale, and in addition, I could hear the wheezing sound, which warned of oncoming asphyxiation. Doctor, my husband has been... The stink sound warned me of an emergency, so I spoke to him. Relax and remain calm. I'm worried you may have more trouble breathing soon. I'll call an ambulance. The nurse in the consultation room noticed how dire the situation was and took a bold action of heroism. She said, I'll accompany him and make sure he's all right on the way to the hospital. But even at the city hospital, his condition was too severe, and they recommended him to a larger university hospital where he can get more advanced treatment. The wife was shocked that the husband's condition was life-threatening, and she started to fear for the worst. Her daughter arrived, and she too was distraught with the situation. Mom, what's happening to Dad? I don't know. We just have to hope and believe. Yeah, but if my husband is gone... Our quick nurse took action. She hugged them both and wrapped their back and told them, He won't. He will absolutely be fine. I promise. The medical professionals are doing the best they can. Believe in them. Yet, yeah. okay, thank you. Dabbing their back and continuing to encourage them as long as 30 minutes, then as they parted, she handed them her business card and said, please contact me anytime if you have any concern and left. It turns out he had been suffering a severe case of pharyngolaryngeal edema and abscess. This is a bacteria infection in the throat that causes threading, shrinking the airway. The attending physician told them that he had been hospitalized even a day later, he would have not survived. The pressure life of a patient in a life or death situation was saved. This was the moment when the office manager, the director, the nurses, and the emergency response team all worked together to pass the baton in a relay of life. He and his family were spared from tragedy and they were so moved by it, all that they came to love our clinic. The other day, this one example of great compassion came back to us in a chain of events. Their daughter attended our year-end party that year, and she performed wonderful by a piece that filled all the participants with great emotion. And to add, their grandson told everyone about his dream to become a doctor who can inspire people like me. Patient and the families are touched by action taken through the baton relay of life, and in return, the patient and the family express their gratitude to the staff who are then also touched. But this is not where the, this chain of compassion ends. Have another look at the manga. When my staff and I are discussing the idea, presenting this story in manga on this stage, they were so moved by the story that they volunteered various ideas and start drawing these manga themselves. Thank you all so very much. Experiences like this have taught us something. When you care for someone as if they are family, then they want to share that feeling of being cherished with those around them. In other words, by expressing compassion to one person near you, you will create a chain of great passion with everyone around you. This is how a, a chain of great compassion occurs. As a reader, I first express the great compassion to my staff. Then my staff will want to share the, the great compassion with the patient, the people on the clinic. The patient who have received this great compassion will also want to share it with the people in their lives. Therefore, by spelling one person near you, you will create a chain of great compassion with everyone around you. 
This idea is also supported by academic leadership theory. Professor Koji Sakamoto, a Japanese management scholar, a former professor at Hosei University, is an endorser of management that value people. He studies this management method based on empathy with people as an academic discipline. According to his theory of corporate management and leadership, there are two ways to manage a company, profit and expansion-oriented management, and people empathy-oriented management. Many companies in the past have gone bankrupt because they have focused too much on profit and expansion-oriented management, and not enough the welfare of their employees. The first approach creates a sense of competition among employees. And because the emphasis placed on achieving results, even at the expense of others, people often think only of themselves, and interpersonal relations often become very poor. Instead, in the latter type of management, where the company is run with empathy, a communal spirit of mutual help is created because employees are valued so highly. The sense of group cohesion is high, and everyone tries to help others. The result are sales and the business performance increase greatly, and the company can last for a long time. Sakamoto and his colleagues have been holding an annual contest in Japan since 2010 called Nihon de Ichiban Taisetsu Nishitai Kaisha Taishu, or Japan's most caring company award. The award is given to the companies that implement management practice, which values their employees and their families with empathy and respect. To date, 189 companies in the food industry, hotel industry, and welfare business have been selected for this award. In fact, we are the first clinic in the healthcare industry to receive this award in 2020. Management that value people is attracting attention in Japan as a management method that inspires others to find their own motivation. Anyone who is a leader has an ideal future that they want to realize. Making the ideal a reality is a self-motivation of the people around you. And if you can raise the same motivation of all the people involved in your organization, you can realize the future you want to create together with them. As a leader, must consider the way you relate to your staff, to which is the people around us like family. Management that value people will generate a ripple effect of empathy and compassion, building an organization in which staff members work independently and take action on their own initiative. When I started my clinic 10 years ago, we are running into many problems. Our clinic was busy from the beginning. I thought this was a good sign, but it wasn't. The staff was quickly overwhelmed. They were making mistakes that could be dangerous to the patients and clinic. They were unable to coordinate on the most basic tasks. Panic, anxiety, and the pressure to perform properly was overwhelming. Staff started to reap. Drama between who to blame for the clinic condition spread like wildfire, and bankruptcy was imminent. Actually, after reading, studying, watching, and imitating organizations, staff oriented, not profit oriented, the changes came. My staff became my children, and like a good parent, I helped them succeed, and the clinic is where this is today because of them. I have always envisioned a future like this a world in which everyone works with vitality, happiness, and brilliance, a world in which organizations do not solely focus on profit or expansion, but value people, especially those with disabilities, foreigners, and other socially disadvantaged people. If people are taken care of like family, then the weak will no longer be weak. People will work harder and be more focused on than anyone else and contribute to the team and the organization. So as a result, profit increased and expansion will occur naturally, showing that organization management was successful. There are challenges to people-oriented management. Everyone is different. Not everyone will respond to compassion in the same way. And sometimes there are people who are reluctant to change. These are people you must listen to more, spend time to understand their needs, and provide any kind of life-saving baton for them to pass to the next person. This baton could be noticing how hard they work, a kind rate of appreciation, a song, a race, 
Why carry the opportunity? Little by little, compassion after compassion, they will come to understand you are building a future that includes them in the success of your organization. By creating a chain of great compassion, we nurture people with initiative. Then we can create an organization filled with people who work with initiative and bigger. By doing so, I believe that we can surely realize a wonderful future filled with love. I invite you readers to join me in creating a chain of great compassion and let's make the future full of smiling people who live proactive and lively lives. Thank you very much.